During the 16th century, the climate changed dramatically for artists. With the Reformation and then the Counter-Reformation, the number of art commissions to artists was considerably reduced. Not only did the new Protestant views require that art be kept to a minimum within their churches, but in some cases art with religious themes was completely destroyed, as in the great iconoclasm in 1566. Essentially, it was a civil war of Christianity, where brother and friend found themselves in opposing camps. What may have started out as philosophical discussion and heated arguments turned quite bloody and destructive. Northern European artists were hit the hardest. There were, however, still wealthy patrons who collected art. Many artists turned to secular themes as subjects for their art. Hans Holbein the Younger, a portrait artist from Germany, on the recommendation of Erasmus to Sir Thomas More, traveled to England to become the king's painter, producing numerous portraits of Henry VIII, his family, and his court. He painted history in the faces of his subjects. Holbein's masterful ability to paint detail and likeness into his subjects, complete with texture and depth, is the true mark of a master portrait painter. The following are some of the many portraits Hans Holbein the Younger painted. His portraits he painted included the Lord of Moret, the Duke of Norfolk, Lady Lee, the Ambassadors, Duchess of Milan, Sir Thomas More, and of course a portrait of King Henry VIII himself, whom Holbein painted numerous times, Jane Seymour, one of his wives, their son, the young Prince Edward, who became King of England at age nine upon the death of his father, and last but not least was the unfortunate Anne of Cleves, whom Henry complained was not near as pleasing to the eye as her portrait led him to believe, and annulled their arranged marriage. Albert Dürer, a German artist, was perhaps the most prolific draftsman and printmaker of all times. Besides the nearly 60 paintings, and thousands of drawings he produced. He is credited with 250 woodcuts, 96 engravings, and about nine more etchings. He was the first to sell printed graphic illustrations, both in books and as single prints, producing them in his own publishing business and selling them to the general populace. Here are a few illustrations from his book of woodcuts called The Life of a Virgin. Durer's enormous woodcut, The Triumphal Arch, was commissioned by the Emperor Maximilian I to give as gifts to, give to cities and courts of the Holy Roman Empire. Around 700 sets were made in the very first printing in 1515, and of the 995 separate carved blocks of wood, they were printed onto 36 large sheets of paper. About 300 were made in a second printing in 1526, and a third printing was made in 1559. The assembled piece is approximately nine and a half by 12 feet. Women also painted, and some became well-known artists in the Renaissance. Sofa Nisba Anguissola from Northern Italy became court painter to Philip II, and her work was recognized by Michelangelo. Her painting of her sisters playing chess demonstrates her ability to capture relaxed expressions on her models and show a developed level of skill rendering figures and details. Lavina Terling of Bruges also received a high appointment as royal patrix for the court of King Henry VIII. Her portraits were favored among royal ladies of the court. This is a painting of the young Princess Elizabeth I. Katerina Hesseman was a woman artist from the Netherlands and was favored by the Queen of Hungary. She painted her self-portrait when she was 20. Toward the end of the 1500s, Spain rose to prominence as the most powerful European empire. Strategic marriage alliances and New World bounty had much to do with their rise in power. The Greek-born artist El Greco spent most of his life in Spain. In his youth, he studied briefly in Venice with Titan. His art was unique for the times and has loosely been associated with mannerism in the late Renaissance period. His mystical portrayal of biblical scenes and gesturing characters sets him apart from any other prolific artist at the time. In the 16th century, the die was cast in the division of Christendom. 
It was only left for the dust to settle and the artists to regain their footing in secular and religious patronages. It had been a monumental 200 years, where religious thought and society were shaken to their core. The levels achieved in the arts of the Renaissance, however, set a high bar for artistic endeavors in the centuries to follow.